Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is Joey Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, welcome to the show. Uh, this is episode number 84, <clears throat> The No Free Will Way of Addressing cl- Crime. And um, basically it's the idea that like, to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, we're not going to punish criminals as we do now. We're going to kind of like revolutionize our criminal justice system. Before we get into this, let's just briefly go into um, what we mean when we say we have a free will and then just basically explain why it's not possible and then why this show is very important. Okay, now we want to start us off. So what, what do we generally mean when we say we, we have a free will? Free will means you can make decisions independent of your genetics and conditioning. I can't, I'm keeping it as simple as possible. Yeah, okay. No more gibberish for us. Or, or, you know, another way of saying is that, like, we can make our decisions independent of anything that we're not in control of. You know, that's another way. But it's good. Okay, so now the thing is, um, why don't we have a free will? Because we cannot make decisions independent of our genetics and conditioning. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the re- same answer. The reason this is, the reason how this could is you? Important. No, you're right, right. Well, the first thing, with, all right. The reason this is important is because. Um, oh, the reason why it's important yeah. is is because like the entire world is like. Well, you said the research says that about thirty percent of people currently don't believe in free will. You know, I I read so seventy percent. I of read in an believe. article. I think it was a New Scientist actually. Uh, it might have been scientific. No, he's a new scientist, I think. And they said that, that yeah, 30% of the world doesn't believe in free will. I don't believe that sounds very high. Where are these people? Because, like, you know, no, because really, throughout the world, they have criminal justice systems, they have, like, religions and all that, that believe in free will. But anyway, generally speaking, you know, the entire world virtually yeah, okay, generally speaking. Is, is, like, completely illuded about this it's just they, they just like well without watching the prior episode they won't know that's all right it's, you have to think every episode is a new audience you yes. got to treat it that way Thank so <laughs> because um basically the entirety of civilization gets the the second fundamental fact of human existence wrong the first fact is we exist second fact is we do things you know we've got that completely wrong the, the reality is nothing is up to us okay free will is an illusion which makes life really amazing Okay, now, so, um, let's go through, let's go through, through no free will way of addressing crime. So, like, a lot of people in L, they'll say, well, you know, we need to believe in free will because if we abandon this belief in free will, if we recognize the truth of our reality, that everything's causal, that everything's conditioned, then society and civilization is going to fall apart. What do you say? All right. Crime, you can pragmatically blame people with, with free will or without free will. But even, okay, let's assume everyone believes in free will, which they do. You, okay, so you pragmatically blame, okay, let's say we change everyone so they don't believe in free will. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to pragmatically blame someone and put them in jail. Now, why? Because it's got what I call a perceived fair exchange of energy. It's not fair for someone to just steal your car. But you can't fundamentally blame them, put them in jail, and in hell. You're just going to put them in jail. So, as far as I'm concerned, the language of the criminal justice system will have to change. And instead of saying, he stole my car, the universe com- compelled it. The entirety of the universe compelled them to steal my car. Exactly. And what happens when so we So we have do to that? pragmatically blame him and separate him out, like the guy who shot everybody in Colorado, because he's a danger to himself and me. Because he could come into another movie theater and shoot everybody, but he's pragmatically to blame so i don't see how anything would change other than what you said the texture of not stigmatizing them well to that's a lot in hell. that's a lot because a lot of times for example you had that article um the new york post of the daily news about some guy rotten hell it said so like when yeah we, when we attribute free will to people that's right we hate people we we kind of like we we basically you know Say that like they're criminals, they're bad, they're evil. They it's deserve. A texture, it's a question they, of texture, of of feeling. That, but what because happens if you're at a murder trial and the guy murders someone? He's pragmatically going to jail, but you don't hate the guy. You actually feel sorry for him. So it's a question. It's, it's a butterfly effect also because the butterfly effect says like a 
a butterfly flaps his wing on one side of the world and causes a typhoon at like the slightest difference. So we're talking about a real nuance. So the slightest difference of a mental attitude, right, now, can make the whole world much more compassionate. But now I, th- I think this is bigger than this because like... It's no, but I'm saying even if you change 0.001% of your mind no, about I know, this, I know. it's going to blossom out into a much better world because you're not going to have this hate I know, going but it's, around. But it's huge. It's not, it's not minor. It's like I'm when, just saying even for work. No, I know, but when, when we attribute free will to people, you know, we say, you know, you deserve to suffer. You're bad, you're evil. And what, what happens when we do this to people, you know, people yes. gain their self-identity a lot of times from society, from the criminal justice system, from judges, from police, from people outside of them, you know. And so what happens when we label people like that, that have committed crimes, they're going to hold on to that identity, which will make it much more likely for them to continue to uh, commit crimes. I got what you're saying. You're saying criminals are getting whacked twice. They're getting whacked once, which we agree with, go to jail, but it's the second whacking of your evil, you deserve to rot in hell, you know, for all of eternity, your soul is going to be put over fire. That's getting whacked. You're an evil person. I mean, and it, you're still a, a person, and fundamentally, you're innocent because you couldn't. You were compelled by the entire universe with your genetics and your conditioning to do the. Even though we don't know why you, all the reasons you, you had reasons why you committed the crime, right? I mean, it's all cause. There's causality, right? So they pragmatically have to be separated. Because what I call a perceived fair exchange, well, anyway, the, the hedonic imperative and the moral imperative and the fairness imperative, it wouldn't be fair if people just went around committing crimes and didn't go to jail for it. Right, but the idea is People would be like, stealing money. Right, but now the, what, what happens is like... So pragmatically, they're, but fundamentally on the God universe level, they're just as innocent as everybody so else. So a lot of times, a lot of crime that's committed now it doesn't have to do with with um let's say you know wanting stuff it has a lot some crime has to do with like you attribute free will to someone else in other words you become angry with someone and then you're going to seek revenge you know so like assaults a lot of like you know marital things and stuff it it involves the belief in free will in other words if people didn't believe in free will they wouldn't be committing those crimes to begin with that's an another important how would they get even in their own minds well what happens talk it out Exactly. What happens is like, you know, with intelligent people, with civilized people, when, when somebody does something wrong, they don't seek revenge. They, they, they seek to understand the, 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 the situation. They would still sue. If necessary. If necessary, right. But again, like to the extent that everybody understands that free will is an illusion, you have... You okay, have, but say you make a product and you have a great brand and someone steals your logo and makes it in China and ruins your whole business... You're still going to pragmatically sue them, but you're not. Again, you're not going to condemn them to a life of hell and torture. Exactly, and that person is not going to feel like a bad person. That, right. that person is going to be, feel as innocent as anyone, and that's an that's an important point because the idea is if we don't have a free will, we are innocent. We're, we're basically victims of fate. You know, we're lucky to the extent that that fate or God or the universe makes us do good, and then we're unlucky to the extent that. And as you were saying before, criminal justice is very. We should have more top. We should have more shows because it's complicated. Fundamentally, we're all innocent in the eyes of the Lord God or whatever the hell you want to universe. Right. But pragmatically, we have to have guilt, justice, innocent. You know, this pragmatic. We're a pragmatic species. Okay. What word do you want to? You don't like pragmatic because it doesn't seem to no, practical. No, it, it makes sense. Conventional, fine. It's, logistical. It's like you can't get into a free will debate every time someone cuts you off on the corner. There's got to be pra- if you have a speeding ticket and the officer comes up to the guy, you're not going to have a philosophy class right there in the side of the road. You're going to have to pragmatically ticket the guy. Right. Pragmatic. It takes too much energy to say I don't have a free. But we all know deep down that we're all fundamentally innocent. That exactly. Okay. That and and that's very. But you do important. agree you're not going to get into a philosophy debate about every single second. No, of, of course. Right. Okay. Now, so like, see, what happens is like with with Christianity, a major feature of Christianity is that like you know Jesus died for your sins. Because of he died for your sins, that means you're innocent. Okay. You know you're forgiven, and that's that's what this is about. Basically, it's not. It it even goes a step further than Christianity because in Christianity, you know, it's like you did something wrong and then you're forgiven. With the reality of our world that we're explaining, with this, you know, uh, showing you that that free will is an illusion, we're not even. There's nothing to forgive. 
you know, because essentially, I mean, this is this goes into the pragmatism, whatever. Also, the idea is that like we did nothing wrong of our own accord to begin with, and that you know that that creates an entirely new world. So many people have have negative images of themselves because people have like you know told them they're bad and all. They, they, these are you know they they become criminal criminals a lot a lot of times. Um, so I like the topic of the show. I wrote down this is the, this is the most difficult. I mean, I've done the show. F- Mr. Mr. George Ortega a few times. This is, there's no script. It's the first time he's showing. I mean, I okay. The no free will of addressing crime. That is a very interesting topic. We need to discuss it and more tonight or today or whatever. It's, it's tricky. All right. Yeah. And one of the but things, it can be done. Yeah. One of the things that happens like tricky, but it can be done if you believe that you have a free. Actually, will. Actually, let's discuss it the whole time because I like it so much. If you believe you have a free will, you'll say, "Well, it doesn't really matter how we." teach our kids when they're young because if we teach them like to not break the law and to be considerate and stuff then when they become adults then they're going to do whatever they want because they can override our conditioning they can override our teaching with their free will but to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion and that what we put into our kids when they're very young how we teach them is going to completely determine this this is the best how they have right so the idea is watching tonight this is it we've done a lot of shows okay now in a few years, a year or two or five or ten, everybody knows there's no free will. Say we the show, which it will. Eventually, we're in a time machine. There's no free will. To, okay. Someone commits a crime in the no free will society. What happens? All right. First of all, they're not going to feel, quote unquote, the pain of guilt. They're going to understand- What does a police officer do when he arrests you? Uh, all right. Um, Let's start at the top. The police officer will very courteously, not not insulting the person, not putting the person down, say, listen, I, I, I have to, I know it's not something that you did of, of your own accord because you don't have a free will, but we have to uphold these different laws. Different language, different texture of respect. language, different respect, different compassion, different syntax, a different feel, different vibe. So he comes over to a house and the, and the, the husband has murdered the wife. And instead of throwing him around like a rag doll, saying you're an evil, disgusting human being, he's going to say, "Sir, the universe compelled you to do this act. It was predetermined. It's going to be a whole different language. It was fated. How unfortunate! You're going to have to go to jail. Don't worry. You won't be going to hell or anything like. We're not stigmatizing you, but you are a danger to yourself or others. You have poor conditioning or genetics, and I'm sorry that your fate is is now jail. That's." Exactly. This is the first time I've ever thought about it. I mean, so this is brilliant. So it's tricky, but can be done. It's very tricky. Well, it's And lawyers who have to go to law school and criminal, they have to learn a whole different uh, language. It's pretty much the way people who are very civilized act now. People who are like, you know, because some people just... They're civilized at high tea at the Regency or the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, but civilized when, when a police officer comes over and sees a, a murdered wife. That, wait. No, in other words, yeah, like, civilized. No, what I'm now, what I'm trying to say is like, there, there's let's let's say two kinds of police officers now. One is like they're gonna like catch a criminal and really put the criminal yeah, down. Yeah, heinous and crime, them. a murder, right, whatever. Whatever, you know. There's the other more police, heinous, the more There's yeah. other police officers that will you know get that same you know person even now believe in free will and te- you know tr- uh, treat the person with respect. You know, not really look down on them and stuff. All right, so that's what's gonna happen fundamentally, categorically, to the extent that we get this right. All police officers will, will act the same way. All okay, judges so will act the same way. I missed the topic. I want to go back to it. So nobody believes in free will and there's a crime. You're saying that the system's going to work exactly the same with jail sentences and punishment, except how they're treated by it's, the officers, the judges, the lawyers, no, it's not gonna, it's the not juries. Gonna be, it's not going to be exactly the same. Why? Because, because they like, go to jail for the same no, amount of years. N- well, maybe, maybe not. Because what happens is like they have to learn our, the lesson. They our t- our criminal justice system is based on just desserts. It's based on you did something wrong, so you have to suffer. Okay, so like these people who do stuff wrong. They can be conditioned without necessarily suffering to the extent they do. I mean, you don't like, have to suffer. You have to go to jail. Suffering's up to you. People might love jail. What do you no, mean? No, no. What I'm saying is, like, in our criminal justice system, it's a penalty. It's a punitive system. In other words, like, you know, if somebody does something wrong because they had a free will, they they have to suffer because of their crime. That's our criminal justice system now. And to if the they're extent, a hero, they get rewarded. To the extent yeah. that we understand that we don't have a free will, we don't make people suffer. We we correct them through through different kinds of conditioning. Yeah, we 
might have to put them away, but we don't have to. We don't have to. Um, we don't have to like. Oh, um, so you're saying it's going to be mostly them. rehab clinics. Exactly. It's going to. You know, what, what if there's a guy so genetically screwed up that they don't think they can rehab him? So, so that person may be, you know, like separated from society for the rest of their life. But, but it's done humanely. And like, I think the point I think that you're, you're bringing up also is that there has to be some kind of deterrence. In other words, like if people know that if they do something wrong, that they're going to be like, there's not going to be any major penalty, then that might be an inducement to do wrong. So, all right, there might be some kind of like, you know, to be separated from society. I think that's probably punishment enough. You know, I don't think not have some to, people, like, some people, I believe, commit crimes because they want to go to jail subconsciously. They can't handle getting a job. They get three square meals a day, a bed. We don't know what's going on in their mind. Well, what I'm saying is you're saying, and I've written here because I've done you know, the live show in New York for about a year, and it's my fourth time. This is by far the most fascinating topic. I, like I said to yours, I don't get this in advance. So I'm, look, I'm having a difficult time. get it. No, no, but I didn't read it. So <laughs> we know eventually there's going to be no free will. Everyone's going to get it. Yes. So how – it says here – the no free will way of addressing crime. And I looked at it, and I'm like, this is fascinating. I mean, this is tricky. Just because something's tricky doesn't mean it's not possible. So oh. people are taking the easy way out. we got to take the hard way out. We have to figure this out and dissect it and get it right. There's going to be a different language, different respect, different demeanor by the police. First of all, the number one free will argument I've heard is you, you could have acted otherwise. So... If you, if you make a mistake in your past, if you could have acted otherwise, why didn't you, right? Exactly. So the criminal couldn't have acted otherwise because if he could have, he would have. So there's no free will. So the police officer comes over and knows that the entire – watch my language. It's not you, Joe Smith, attack Mary, James, Jane, and you're – it's Mr. Smith. The universe has compelled you to attack this woman. I'm sure there were good re – not good, but there were causes and reasons – don't worry, you still have to go to jail, but it's not really fundamentally your fault. You're not a bad guy, you're not evil, but come with me, you have to come into the police car, Mr. Smith, and take your reconditioning clinic. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like it's done much more humanely, much more compassionately. Right, but he's going to the same place. Let's say he's got the crime, let's say he has to go to jail for the same amount of years. Say, say it was 20 years, same everything, but the way the jury looks at him. Nobody's yelling rotten hell like Sandersky in the cover of the post. No one's saying you're evil the like Mr. Guards, Madoff where, yeah. where they put the devil picture on him. I mean, no one has cartoons of like, you know, I've seen cartoons of Hitler dancing in hell with some other, you know, no, none of, all that should be illegal actually. We will treat them with respect, the respect that anybody res deserves. But they're still going to be separated. They have to be just because that's a pragmatic, you know, yeah. You have to protect society. And yourself because they could t attack you. Exactly. So, okay, so. so you're talking about the same system with a different, I don't know what the word is because it's first I'm saying, with a different texture? Is that the wrong word? I think texture isn't strong enough. I think the idea is that uh, it's like a different perspective, a different um, paradigm. It's, it's a, it's a completely, like, different. completely different way of dealing with it. I mean, it's, it's the difference between treating someone with, with respect and really demeaning a person. Yeah. It's completely different. Yeah, texture's not strong enough. With a different vibe, aura? Whatever, but the, the, the idea is that like people would, would not be treated... In like fact, criminals. if someone is being arrested and someone from the audience yells out rotten hell, that person should be in jail more than the criminal. In other words, we should have a crimes against fundamental humanity for, for, the, for the... We should start deterring the, the juror or the person on the street yelling, you an evil bastard, you should right, rotten what, hell. What, what, what's going to happen? Or the New happen? York Post right. for putting right. the cover what's of Madoff with the devil's what's, picture. Uh, me, right, 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 Those right, people right, should enough, be. Enough, enough, enough. Right. What's going to happen? them. What's going to happen? Because that's not right. What's going to happen is that as everybody understands that free will is an illusion, it's gonna happen. people are not going to like be in the audience screaming, you know, you should rot in hell and stuff because everybody's going to get it. That's, that's the but point. But if they do, they need to be arrested. Well, but yeah, there's got to be a deterrent for that. Of course, because obviously, if if somebody's crimes blaming, against fundamental if humanity. Somebody's, sorry. If somebody's blaming okay, gotcha, someone gotcha. in that way. Three minutes. Yeah, because like this is a perfect example. This, he interrupts me all the time, I mean, right. and it's it's pathological. There's something you know he can't help it. Now, like I've got to dress in some way. It's very frustrating. I'm not talking. Like, I know, but you know, you, and like 
It's a perfect example. You know, people do things that they can't help, and we have to react to it in a certain way that, 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 that does some kind of like an effect, but, but without the, the, um, the aggression, without the, the, ne the negativity. All right, um, so in, in terms of, yeah, what happens like if you have somebody who is in an audience and you're or somebody just yelling, you know, some kind of negative, you know, accusations at someone, you know, who's done something wrong, obviously that person doesn't understand that free will is an illusion well enough, you know, hasn't learned it well enough. But like, you know, this, this concept that people don't have a free will, it's so basic, it's so simple to understand that if society decided to spend time on it, to really devote resources, resources to it, um, five years tops, ev everybody on the planet should be able to understand this as well. As, because like what happens is when people get this, people talk about it, people think about it, people start practicing it, it becomes second nature. But what if I told you I'm the editor of the New York Post and it sells papers to put rotten hell, your evil cartoons of Madoff and a Hitler out uh the devil's, you know, I mean, people, what if it sells more? That would be illegal. It would right. be, it would be illegal to disparage someone for something that, that they obviously had no control but to do. So there'll be a huge financial penalty to the guy who decided to put that on the cover. And again, yeah, like, you know, the, the guy wouldn't decide because it would be something that they would understand. No, no, I know, but the, I'm asking you how we're going to convert. It's going to be a gradual process. Yeah. So it's going to start being new laws on the books that you cannot put devil's, you know, clothing on a criminal or rotten flames and hell and things like that. I would think, I would think, and, you know, like, and... And, and what about if there's a hero? Can you put angels and rewards and heaven in, in... Can you do it the other way? No, that's just is equally illegal. With Well, with heroes, what happens is, like, we're hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure, avoid pain. So, in other words, we like to kind of like it's we're not going to attribute a causality to people like that to do really yeah, good but that'll things. promote free will also but, no we can celebrate in other words somebody does something good we can celebrate celebrate the fact that they did something good but we don't have to like they will know that they were completely compelled and but they shouldn't be on the cover of the paper with angels and god in heaven and being it shouldn't be the if they do something good, we shouldn't be glorifying them with a, a beautiful afterlife either. Well, we don't have to, quote, unquote, glorify them above other people. But it's like, you know, it's, it's, I think it would be all right to recognize when yeah, people yeah, yeah, do yeah, good. Yeah. You know, just as long every, as, as they understand, it, as everyone understands that they had to do what they did. You know, it wasn't up to them. Um, so basically the idea is like to the extent that we overcome um, this illusion of free will, we behave much more compassionately. We, 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 instead of like, you know, putting people in prison and jail as criminals, we heal them. They need healing. They need to understand, you know, why they did wrong. And again, like, to the extent that we overcome this free will illusion, we're not going to say to ourselves and to each other, well, you know, it doesn't matter what we do with kids because, like, when they become adults, they can do whatever they want. You know, we'll, we'll teach them how to, how to behave when they're, when they're young. So, so they'll, when they're adults, they will be conditioned to not break laws, to not do what's wrong. Okay. Um, again, um, so we've got about four minutes now. Again, in this, this idea of overcoming this illusion of free will, there's nothing bigger that's going on in the planet because like you have to understand this is our very consciousness this is you know the entire world has this completely mistaken consciousness of who we are why we do things and when you think about all the wars it creates all the all the crime in terms of like vengeance and revenge you know it just like wreaks havoc on a personal level on a societal level you know on a global level so it, it's very important to get this right and it creates peace of mind because you'll be so relieved to know that all your prior mistakes were predetermined. You had a causal, ch we didn't talk about the causal chain, but every causal chain, people make mistakes. And if you start to hate yourself, how, how could I say that to this girl? She got, how did I cheat on her, divorce? But it, once you, if you believe in free will, you can actually start hating yourself, get very depressed and commit suicide. So the number one, one of the number one benefits is not hating yourself. 
That's a very. You don't have a free will. Yeah, because in terms of like we're talking about the criminal justice system, also with the mental health system, there are so many people that feel bad about themselves. They get depressed and perhaps commit suicide or attempt suicide. A lot of this has to do with their ascribing free will to themselves. They 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 can't measure up to other people. They they blame themselves for for whatever, and that leads to those uh, depressed yes. feelings. <clears throat> To be, um, to be quite honest with you, believing in free will is a, I don't want to curse, them, it's a gigantic kind of pain in the ass because you rank your destinies with other people and you start saying, like you just said, why does he have this and I have that? And if it's all causal chain, you can't compare yourself to others. Right, and again... Like they say, compare and despair. We're all totally different cause and effect chains. Right, we're still going to have to have laws. We're still going to have to have rules you know, and who knows, maybe eventually, maybe a thousand years from now, when people really get this, that nobody's to blame for anything, then it might be that all these crimes that we're committing now are really pretty much directly a result of, of our free will beliefs. So, no one is yeah. fundamentally blamed. Right. <laughs> right. Um, all right, so we've got about a couple of minutes. And again, the, the reason this is so very important, um, you know... We've, we've got a world, we've got, we've got issues we have to address. Climate change, it's going to be with us for decades. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can address it basically by, um, by blaming ourselves and each other, blaming certain industries, certain people, certain countries for what they haven't done, what they've done. done. And to the extent we do that, we're going to be sidetracked from, from basically addressing what needs to be addressed. To the extent we can overcome blame, blame of ourselves and others through overcoming this illusion of free will, we can address climate change and the global economic crisis and these crises, you know, the, these monumental challenges that we're going to have for decades, you know, in a much more civilized and harmonious way. All right, well, that's, that's all we have time for today. We're going to, like, you know, we're going to keep exploring, you know, why we don't have a free will and why it matters. And hopefully soon, again, um, 30, over 30 articles this year, you know, in major publications just demonstrating that we don't have a free will. This is historic. Nothing like this has the ever two happened. two-cover magazines. magazines. And, yeah. Um, so basically, you know, this, this is like a paradigm shift in human consciousness. It's, it's kind of like, again, nothing as big as this has ever happened because it pertains to the basic fundamental nature of who we are as human beings. All right, this is um, George Ortega and Anel saying, you know, thanks for watching. We'll be back on other ex episodes to explain to you why free will is an illusion and why it matters. Thanks for watching.